Okay, so the skill we've chosen to analyze for our motor skill project is the clean and jerk. So how about we classify the skill? The skill is a gross skill as it uses large muscle groups. It is a serial skill as it is three different discrete skills in series. These include the high pull, clean and split jerk. The clean and jerk is a closed skill as it is self-paced and is in a predictable environment. A clean and jerk has high complexity but low organisation. For the shrug, the stance must have feet shoulder width apart and knees over the toes. Shoulders in front of the bar. Hips higher than the knees. Straight back, core engaged, head lifted, eyes straight and contracted trapezius. For the high pull, you need a hip thrust, keep the bar close to the body, high elbows, and a good balance. Shoulders must be in front of the bar for as long as possible. Contact the thigh, momentum from the hip thrust and have triple extension. For the catch, you must get your elbows under the bar, get your elbows up and out, have a straight back and catch in a full squat. For the split jerk, you need to make sure you get under the bar, have a wide stance, you are not pressing the bar above your head, you have good balance, forceful leg extensions, split and recover. Okay, so for ways to foster positive transfer, um, the cognitive processes should be similar to the criterion task to allow positive transfer. The exercises that we get for them to perform are skill specific. So when designing a training program, we've chosen skills that are like quite similar and have relevance to the clean and jerk, so as to, positive, uh, as to foster positive transfer. Overhead, front and back squats are all used to assist the jerk, overall strength and shoulder strength. Split squats are also used to assist the jerk, increasing the speed of the split, getting under the bar and leg strength. Upright row assists the high pull and increases shoulder strength. Box jumps increase leg power. Shrugs with dumbbells are used to facilitate the shrug and the high pull, increasing shoulder strength. High pulls are used to imitate the movement and increase upper body strength. Military press and dumbbells are all used to increase upper body strength. We came up with some verbal cues in order to help the learner win their skill acquisition. These include slide, which refers to keeping the bar close to the body in the high pull, scoop, which involves getting the elbows up and out under the bar in the catch, and shoot, which refers to the quick extension of the arms in the jerk. So motivation is enhanced by goal setting. Um, you've got your outcome goals, your performance goals, and your process goals. For outcome goals, they can be things like completion of the skill, putting the discrete skills all together and performing it as a whole, You've got performance outcomes, um, higher score on a checklist that we developed, uh, increasing the weight or the amount of weight lifted in the skill, and improving your technique. And in terms of process goals, that has to do with correcting all your errors. Okay. The guidance hypothesis is to do with feedback and trying to obtain an optimal um, frequency of feedback. General feedback should be used for early learners, then later moving on to more descriptive feedback. Prescriptive feedback should be used to correct errors, not just describe them. Feedback delay can be used to ask questions and provoke reflective thinking of the individual. A marking criteria for clean and jerk could be used to assess progress. As well as this, video analysis could also be used. 
For our skill, we've chosen part practice as the optimal way to practice this skill because it is high complexity and low organization. Um, the progressive part method, in, um, introducing combinations as quickly as possible and moving into whole practice. Using corresponding numbers for shrug, high pull, clean and split jerk, the method of training is as follows, using part and quickly moving on to whole practice. In terms of ways to simplify this task, we've used just a really light bar. You can use a stick that's hardly any weight at all just to get the technique and the movement down first um, and slowly progress up to higher weights and things like that. We thought that constant practice would be suitable for this skill because it's a closed skill and there's always a stable environment like in a gym or in a competition or whatever. And distributed practice we thought was also necessary to just avoid fatigue. The Olympic lifting is really, really neurally fatiguing and so distributed practice is definitely uh, optimal. As well as physically learning the skill, it's a good idea to use mental practice. This helps you to learn the skill a lot better and um, you get a cognitive, cognitive rehearsal of the skill. You can use imagery and mental rehearsal for these sorts of practice. The appropriate neural pathways are also used when you use mental practice, so this can help in the action when you perform it physically. It also helps with kinesthetic awareness. So in terms of trying to get the learner to remember the skill and to pay attention, um, we reduce the complexity of the skill by breaking it down into several parts. Um, this assists with um, just helping the learner learn the skill in different, in separate little parts, in smaller little bits. So we're keeping the cues just minimal and um, meaningful. So we've got the slide, scoop and the shoot. They're relevant cues. They're reminding the learner of things that they need to remember throughout while um, performing the skill. And in terms of feedback, we're keeping it kind of minimal as well, just as to not overload the learner when they're still trying to remember lots of things and learn the skill. brings a tear to your eye. His wife, that one's for Susan. That is remarkable. In conclusion, by breaking down the skill and developing techniques in order to facilitate the learning of a clean and jerk, we are able to train someone and increase their physical capacity in order to perform the skill.